This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, I'm starting it off. Uh, we are coming off a holiday season. We had um, Christmas and New Year's, obviously. Uh, there was a week in there that we did not do the cast. I, I saw some stuff on social media. Um, I, I'm off social media technically, but I hopped on just to kind of see what was going on and what people were saying. We are uh, sorry we didn't do the cast last week, um, but and I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, Start the cast off with. Um, I mean, there's a, there's there's not really too there, there's that there's not really too too many things you could do to skirt around what has happened. But um, yeah, Pete, uh, I'm gonna get emotional. Pete lost his dad to uh, COVID. My father yeah. passed away. Pete's, Pete's dad uh, passed away. Uh, what was it, Pete? New Year's Eve, Christmas New Eve? New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. And my grandfather passed away on Christmas, so they're really tightening up the holiday <laughs> season for years to come. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Pete, you didn't even, you didn't even t- tell me your grandfather well, died. I looked at my brother. I said, one of us is going on Thanksgiving, and the other one's dying on Easter. <sighs> Listen. Oh, folks, God. I, uh, uh, I, this is real. I, I, I didn't want to cry on here, and I... We've been with you guys a long time, and in a lot of ways, coming on here and, and sharing this with you guys is, it's like sharing it with a family member, man. And this is not easy, but I feel like to do, ignore it or not bring it up would just, like, be disrespectful to my dad. And it was horrible, and I can't even, my heart bleeds for everyone dealing with this stuff. And I want to go on record saying Despite the stuff we say on this cast, my parents were so careful, masked up, cleaned, barely went out, all that stuff that you're supposed to do. So it's none of that, you know. Um, and my mom had it, and they both got it. And um, early in December, on like December 11th, I think, they both, my dad went into the hospital first, and then my mom went in. Uh, a couple days later, because he's like, you got to get your mother to come in here. And my mom was, as I said to Sebastian, she's at home, total Irish woman, trying to sweat out the Wuhan special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and listen, man, I, I've been crying, folks, for 30 days. I've been crying, and I've been praying, and I've been doing all that. And I really just want to come on here and forget, you know, like, and just trying to have some laughs. I mean, my sister's trying to go back to her job, my brother, his, I'll never forget my father, and we'll talk about this, but we can't get back to this show being what it was until we have this show. And um, before going any further, I just want to say what a fucking great friend Sebastian was throughout this whole thing. I mean, you really know who your friends are. And I mean, calling, uh, texting every day, three times a day, his family reaching out, they never even met my dad, his sister leaving emails. And, you know, I know everyone deals with stuff differently, but for those people that kind of think, just to give you a little heads up, oh, hey, uh, I'm going to give them their space. I don't know how they feel. You're never wrong reaching out if you love somebody. They can just not pick up. So that would never be wrong. And you know who your friends are. And we can get into it now going on, but shit, I lost my dad. Uh, Okay. Yeah, this is a TV show, by the way, bro. I mean, you, I would be fucking fitting myself for the tuxedo right now. Are you telling me we're not gonna win an Emmy for this? So we gotta laugh, man. My dad would want us to, <laughs> and we got to, man. We got to. Well, yeah. Listen, you know, before we even got on this, Pete was like, "Is it, is it wrong uh, to to inject some humor into uh, something like this?" And uh, I don't know, my whole life I've often used the humor as a way to, it's like very therapeutic to deal with something like this. But, you know, you're going to grieve, you're going to cry, that's that's natural. Uh, but also, sometimes uh, laughing about some of the experience too could also help. So, uh, you know, tears and, uh, and a smile. Uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with yeah. it, and uh, everybody deals with things in a different different way. I I I, I want to, uh, you know, Pete. 
uh, when he told me this, um, you know, struck a chord, obviously, because, you know, I got parents, uh, you know, uh, in this age group and, uh, you know, you often hear of COVID from afar, you know, I, I think middle of the summer we were going, you know, anybody that's got this thing. Mm. And it was like, uh, you know, it, it just seemed like the odds were, were in our favor if we just, you know, did our masks and did our distancing. But then Remember when you in start- March, in March, it was like Tom Hanks and a guy named Bill, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're all fine. And then it just... <laughs> And then it's just, yeah, and now it's like you're starting to see it kind of hit people around you. And obviously, you know, once it starts hitting home, you, uh, you know, it, it's just like anything else. You, you know, you, you hear people having heart attacks and then you go to the doctor and he tells you, you got to go on, uh, on, on medication because, you know, then you start eating right and what have you. But anyway, that regardless, uh, you know, I've told you this uh, my condolences, our condolences here at the Mascalco family goes out to your family. This is a, an you, awful man. thing to deal with. Uh, I, I, I thought also of your dad, uh, <laughs> again, when, uh, you told me about three weeks ago on the cast that, uh, that his golf buddies were telling him how good the cast was. Yeah. And, man. Yeah. Uh, it's, um, it's just sad. It's a sad it is, man. It's so sad. It's just, and he was just still, I mean, he was still rolling, man. He was just rolling along and just the lungs couldn't fight it, man. <clears throat> and when they're in the hospital like that, uh, and my dad was in a, a fine hospital. I mean, you know, it wasn't like, and he had his own room and, and was all, that was all as good as it could be. But it's, it's, you can't, it's, in, it's inhumane. You can't go up and see them. And the, and the people that are going in and see them are all gloved up. I mean, I'm, I'm literally sitting outside my dad's window in my car every day, fucking looking up at his hospital window. And then he'd come and wave like the fucking Pope, you know, hey, you know, get the thing. And we were on the phone. Oh, <clears throat> we got him to go. He was able to go home and pass it home. So there was that. But, uh, yeah, man, it was just, you know, fucking tough, man. Tough. Yeah. No, it's it's tough, bro. Um, so, I, do, I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how to navigate the cast here. There's uh, no right or wrong way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt <laughs> and bring stuff up. And then, listen, again, man, this is what we do. And I just don't want anyone to think that I'm being disrespectful. My dad... Uh, and uh, he's the greatest everybody feels this way about their dad and I, and they should but I feel my dad was the greatest dad that ever lived the greatest man I ever met and uh, just died with so much dignity and no fear I mean no fear just like telling tell, like uh, he, he tells me a story right when my dad first went into the hospital and he and he uh, two days later he calls me and he's like you gotta call me uh, I got a funny story I got to tell you. That's what he says, right? So I call him up. I'm like, hey, Dad, what's going on? I've obviously, we've been talking to him nonstop anyway. But um, And he goes, so I didn't tell the family. I didn't want to upset them. But, you know, like my dad had a quadruple bypass years ago. You know, I mean, you know, so. And he goes, um, at one point, I'm in the hot, after they started giving me the medication and stuff, he goes, my heart started pounding, really pump, you know, afibbing, as they call it. Yeah, yeah. And, nurse, and a nurse came in because that's the only one who was around. And she goes, she was really nervous and she didn't know what to do. Like what, you know, so she did this thing where they put a bag on you and it made it and it like to, the way you breathe. So my father's like, and that made my heart stop beating so fast, you know? And he goes, but then like two minutes later, it started beating really fast again. And she's paging the cardiologist, but you know, he's COVID hospital. I mean, everywhere now in the whole world, these doctors are like, that's a whole nother thing, man. I don't want to let my emotions get ahead of me with all that. But, you know, they're, they're all over the place. And, you know, so they couldn't get a hold of the doctor. And my father goes, then you see them come in. Uh, he goes, and you hear, first he says, I heard the machine beeping. And I see them talking about me. And that's when it all went down. He goes, but then I see them come in with the gurney, with the things to fib you, like hit your chest. And he goes, and I see them talking out there with that. And he goes, so I figure this is it, man. The heart's not stopping. So he, he goes, I text your sister. 
and let her know, reminded her where the safe was with all the papers and all the paperwork, right? And I'm like, oh my God, Dad, on your, on your deathbed, you're tightening your shit up. And then I tell my sister that story and she goes, oh my God. And I go, what? She goes, I literally got a text from dad at 3 p.m. saying, just to remind you, this is where the dad, I go, yeah, he was, he was having a heart attack when he, when he, when he sent you that text. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I mean, you, you had said something in kind of passing, but you're like, oh, I'll save it for the cast. Can you tell me the 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 Rocky story? There's something about Rocky and your dad. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, I mean, this is the kind of stuff. I mean, you want to talk about touching, man. So when my mom went in, she went into the hospital too. And like, you know, this is the thing, you know, like my mom was in 11 <laughs> days and she got out and she's on oxygen. My mom was already on oxygen, <laughs> right? So... When you have my dad struggling and like, you know, the, the family's kind of going, is this as great of a hospital as we think it is? I go, well, you got to figure this, you know, maybe there's not, because you, know, you look at this hospital and you go, oh, so-and-so of this age got out at that hospital. You know, is this one the best hospital to be? In? I go, I got to think these other hospitals are looking at this hospital going, that lady got out on oxygen. I mean, that's insane, you know? My mom's just tough, tough. I'm, and it just maybe, you know, just it just uh, it affects everybody different, as we all know, man, because, you know, the congressman who was 40 something went down. Uh. But anyway, um, so they were telling me, my dad was telling me that they play. He goes, I kept hearing Rocky, dun, 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 dun. you know, not kept, but you know, he, my dad was there oh, 18 days, you know, and he says you'd hear it over a few days. So he goes to the nurse, why, why do they play Rocky? And she goes, oh, my God, bro, they play Rocky anytime someone who has COVID is getting out. Isn't that crazy? Wow. When they're better, they play Rocky. So everybody knows somebody else got out. Uh, so anyway, then my mom is on a floor lower than my father. And they can't even they can't even be together. You can't even put these people together. Right. So, like, they're talking on the phone four times a day. What did you get for food? You know, like, it's just, like, it's the saddest shit. And, again, folks, I don't know how much I, you want to hear. I want to, well, wait, I don't know. Am I sharing too up. much? I don't want to no. freaking make back people up, upset. This is a fucking comedy. No, no. What? Why can't they see each other if they both got it? Do you know? <sighs> Like, if they both got it, isn't it like, okay, you got it, I got it. Yeah, what, well, what it's, we it's hospital rules, and it's it's like, it's all these new rules, man. It's these these regulations and these rules that two people with COVID can't be in the same hospital room if there's other rooms provided. Plus, at one point, they were both on a level of oxygen that you could only get in the walls. So they couldn't even, they only have, you know, one in wow. per room. and then But that makes you go, well, fucking, maybe you should have two of these in each room. <laughs> So, you know, it's like, this is, this is inhumane. This doesn't, they, they need human fucking contact. It took like five days before a nurse show. My dad had to download <clears throat> Google a Duo so we could talk. And when, and when we're seeing each other, he's like, Peter, it's fucking heartbreaking. So my mom's in the floor below him. And, he, and my father, again, just such a hero. All he cared about was my mom. I just want your mother out of here. Take care of your mother. Take care of your mother, right? So uh, my mom is getting out. She's finally getting out, you know, and they play Rocky. And my dad texts me uh, and he goes, they're playing Rocky right now. And I'm pretty sure it's for your mother. Oh, so, man. Uh, I mean, yeah. some. Jesus Christ. So again, man, I just feel like, you know, I know this show sucks people in that capacity and that, that it's not funny. But, you know, and I just want to say, too, um, for anyone who has parents, you know, in the 70s, you know, it seems like they're telling people when you get symptoms come in. I mean, as far as, uh, you know, they're saying if you when you can't, it's almost like people are thinking they're supposed to last it as long as they can. And if they can't take it, come in. But if you're over 70, you got to go and you just sense anything, man. Go in because the sooner you start getting those drugs, the better they'll work. That's why like guys like Trump and, and politicians, they're getting tested constantly. So if they do have it, boom, they're getting the drug immediately. So Yeah, yeah good good point. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people wait till it might be, you know, like they're they're coughing on the floor and then they I mean, out here in LA, I mean, it, it's gotten so bad where <clears throat> if, if they come to pick you up and they don't think you're gonna make it and you got COVID, they'll leave you. Yeah, I know. I, I was like, what? 
I they fucking know. leave you? I mean, it's it's like, it's 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 crazy. So, what a what a weird weird time. I was telling Lon, and and again, you know, it's it's knock on wood, everybody's healthy here, but. It's one of these things where it's hard to keep your spirits up when you start hearing when it's all bad news. And even with yeah. the vaccine, even with the vaccine, just a sidebar here. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> they knew it was coming, right? The vaccine. Yeah. This is. Yeah. It's supposed to be 20 million vaccinated. There's only like whatever, 5 million. Va- why? Why wasn't like. What the fuck you've been doing for the last 10 months? Dude, I, are you kidding me? I had When I had my bachelor party years ago when I got married, <laughs> took like seven, eight of my closest buds, fam, cousin, couple of them, right, to a little cabin in the middle of the woods, brought a gigantic bag of mushrooms. We stayed two days, and both nights... I would divvy up eight little piles of mushrooms, and everybody lined up. They came in, they put their hands over the desk, and I just scraped their pile into the palm of their hand. And everybody did shrooms. I mean, what the fuck? I I, I know how to do a vaccine line. (laughs) I did it on my bachelor party. Line up. It's going to be a long line. Bring a fucking igloo cooler. You know, bring a lawn chair. Bring some tunes. Get on the line. Get hit. As soon as you get hit, get back on the end of the line. So when you come back around, we got your second one lined up. It's going to be a shit process. We're all going to be shitting in the streets. It's going to be horrible. But it'll last a month and we're all done. Go home. Fuck you, no, man. I, I, I don't get it. I don't understand... And I was talking to a doctor friend of mine. I said, why don't they just, first of all, they should have hired a private company to, yeah. to, to do this. <laughs> World is falling apart, bro. <laughs> Absolutely falling apart. <laughs> I mean, I went from, should I get a gun to other, any left on the shelf? <laughs> right? I don't even think there are anymore. Sold out. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I just, saying, I, I, no, I was talking to a doctor friend of mine. I said, you know. First of all, they should have tapped Elon Musk's brain for this and said, what's the best way to do this? He would have came up with some some right. battery or something that would have flown it over. Yeah. Why can't they just send the <laughs> shot directly to your house? By the way, Elon Musk can't help because he's too busy packing for texts. <laughs> right? <laughs> He's like, let me get to Austin. Let me do some unpacking. I'll give you a buzz. I got to get the fuck out of here before California burns to the ground. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I I was asking the doctor, I go, why can't we self-administer the shot? Like, you got heroin addicts out underneath the 405 underpass shooting up heroin, right? Uh-huh. Nobody's dying. Nobody's dying over there. They're like cockroaches. These people, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these people, these people are doing fine. Why can't I just stick it in my own arm and we'd be done with it? Get Amazon, ship the shit out, and it, it arrives at your door. And then you do it. I know. I, and he's like, well, liability isn't it. I'm like, I'm, listen, man. You got to ballot out to everybody, but you can't get the vaccine out? <laughs> just put it in the same envelope you were sending the ballot out <laughs> to everybody who didn't ask for those two. Right? I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. You can get out what you want to get out. Uh, yeah, right? Uh, so, I don't know, man. Oh it's boy, just Oh boy. Am I showing anger? <laughs> well, hey, man, that's what the, uh, uh, there's a lot of anger over here. I'm like a, I'm at wit's end over here. Oh, bro, you are. Oh. How did this thing leak from the Wuhan lab anyway? Was it like an accidental leak or was it a guy opening up the door for like 10 seconds and then closing it? Uh, did we cover this on the last cast of like why isn't anybody arrested for this thing? Like, We're not even allowed. They won't even let us go over there and take a look around. They will soon. It's like it's like you hear a gunshot and the cops are at the door and they go, G- give me like four or five days. Then I'll let you in. <laughs> I'm just dissolving the body in the tub right now. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, and and, and when we and everyone goes, oh, OK, let us know when it's cool to come over. And we'll come yeah. over and take the fake look. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I, I still don't know where this thing came from. Was it a wet market? Did somebody, a- even if somebody accidentally let this thing out, where is like, where is the, 
the 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 arrest. I mean, fuck, I don't return a library book on my credits dinged. And this guy kills three million people and uh, nobody's saying nothing. Nobody's, nobody's even looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> I would at this point go, listen, absolute immunity or uh, amnesty, whatever the hell you call it, to whoever started this, you have 100%. We promise not to do anything to you to like, you know, punishable. Yeah. Let's just start. Let's just start figuring it out how to f get rid of it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like this is way beyond. You know, who, we want to know who did it because you're in trouble for breaking it. Now it's like, who did it? Because you're the only one who knows how to fucking what we need to fix it. No, right? they don't know nothing. It's just like from what I heard, it's a guy that was in the lab and a little like spilled on the t like they weren't cleaning the shit up over there. It wasn't like. Uh, they, they didn't. But, uh, they didn't follow protocol. Well, we but we need the 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 you know we need the first guy though, right? The first person who got it. Like you had to find a monkey in that Dustin Hoffman movie. Or the first guy that got it. Yeah, we need that guy. I mean, is that guy back at work? And everyone's like, Shh, don't tell anyone it's Chen. He's a sushi chef down the you know? I mean, fucking. We need Chen. Or whoever it is, I'm just saying. I, like, if it was an Italian guy, they'd be saying we need Tony. So that's all I'm saying. I mean, come on, come on, folks. All right. I mean, you, uh, come on. Let's let's tone it down with that shit too. By the way, I meant to tell you, every once in a while, doing a temp check. I'm not kidding you. Are you kidding me, bro? This shit is fucking coming right through the camera lens. <laughs> Oh my god! It's not working. I'm laughing too. Much. I keep coming in lower than ninety eight point seven. I tell Jack, I go, "Do I have hypothermia? What the fuck is this?" Uh, Me too. I get like ninety six point seven. I go, "Is that normal?" Right, ninety five point nine. That's favorite FM station, by the way. <laughs> it's for you, Dad. We're only doing this for you, Dad. I know you're looking down, man. Forever. Oh man. Yeah, but I mean, you know, uh, the other day I go to Jackie. When I was home, and, and like I said, bro, I knew, well, Sebastian knows because he was like really there for me. I mean, really there for me. But um, it was 30 days of, of craziness. So when I got home and you're so exhausted and drained emotionally and because yeah, I'm alone with all these doctors and all these different, even like when my dad was coming home um, to, to, to pass it home and I have to be on the phone with the person who's going to bring, oh gosh, you know, to bed or whatever. And, uh, the guy's like, what else do you need? Uh, what the fuck? Like, I'm going to go, well, considering I did two years in nursing school, <laughs> I know I'm also... If there's ever a time to just tighten me up with all the, sh the stuff I need, yeah. just be right. You should just do send it. it. Just send, send it. it. <laughs> if you send think I might need it, fucking pack it in. <laughs> you know? I mean, shit. It was very clear, you know, if it's financially, my dad had good medical, everything was great. So, you know, don't just, just bring it, bring it, you know? Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'll do it. This is one I have to share for the cast listeners because I nah, know it's too heavy. But anyway, um, what was the last thing we were just talking about? I interrupted, I think again. It's the um, Chinese and the, no. the trying to find out the thing and the. Oh, it's a, um. I can't remember. The temperature remember. check. Oh, oh, about being really tired and stuff. So I'm, I come yeah, home yeah, with Jackie yeah. and I go, I'm sitting down on the couch and I'm like, I'm short of breath. I'm short of breath, you know? And she goes, well, it's because you walk back and forth from the kitchen five times in a row, you know? And then, and then like, uh, if I have a runny nose, I'm like, well, I normally would have a runny nose this time of year. But is it that right? We're all doing that. It's crazy. I was up on the floor, bro. I told well, you. yeah, you, you yeah you went up you went up there. Did you you geared up, right? I geared up, but I was, um, you know, they they're not supposed to let you up there unless the person is passing. And at the time, my father was actually, you know, he's still having a good run. There was some improvement here. He was, you know, so there, he, he was doing all the right things, moving around, trying to clear up his lungs, and trying that. And uh, and then there was improvement where he was breathing better and breathe. And then this just this virus just does its relentless. So um, during one of those times, you know, and I'm downstairs, I can't see him, but for whatever reason, I'd go there. My sister was unbelievable. My brother was unbelievable. Dropping food off. I mean, my brothers and sisters, I, I just love them, and they're so great and awesome. But I'm sitting there, and then finally, and they say you can't see him unless they're passing. So. 
I'm on the phone with the doctor, and I'm like, well, considering my dad, you know, could he could have a heart attack at any given moment. Can I can can I get up there and see him? I mean, these people need to see somebody, you know. Oh, well, I can see what strings I can pull. Um, where are you now? Like, you know, time-wise? I go, where am I now? I, I go, I'm sitting in the Subaru looking at my dad's window in the parking lot. Like, I have been all morning and I'll be doing all afternoon. Oh, 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 okay. I didn't... I didn't know. Like, what do you, what do you think? This is my dad. Where the fuck yeah. do you think I am? On a canoe in Delaware River? Fishing? What the fuck? Does any... This is called love, guy. Get a fucking clue. So, uh... Then he goes, I'll call you back in five minutes. And he calls me back. And to, their, to their benefit, uh, he's like, I'm going to get you up. You can come up. Come on in. Right? So now you go from, you know, this guy, me, being like, let me up. To now they're like, come on up. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> so I go, I'm on the phone. I go, all I got is a little blue mask. And he's like, just come up and I'll meet you at, on the third floor. The third floor is a COVID floor, you know? So I'm like, I want to be like, well, when I open it up, is it is like a tent that you go in there before you go in? <laughs> so then I go into the hospital and there's, you know, there's nobody in the, in the hospital, obviously. No one's hanging out or anything. So I go up to the guy who's always at the desk and I'm like, uh, they said I can go up and see my dad on the third floor. And he's like, okay, just sign here. And I go, this is, this is all I go up with? Am I gonna be? Am I gonna get COVID? And he's like, No, no, it's it's, you know, contained to the rooms, you know. So you get up there, and uh, I'm just standing there, you know. And everyone around me's they're they're mostly just in masks too, but they have gloves on. But it's not what you would think it would be, you know. It's not like tents everywhere and stuff. And, I, and no one's there to meet me. The guy's not there. So then I look down the hall and I see the guy and then he, they have me go down right in front of my dad's room. He doesn't even know I'm there yet. It was like, it's just a surprise. And they put everything on me, the gown and everything, you know, and then I went in and uh, you know, I ended up touching foreheads anyway, you know, it's like irresponsible, but you like need a little physical yeah. contact. Hey, that was a nice story, huh? Sorry. <laughs> It's, I like how I, I I would probably be doing the same thing. I like how comedians always are are are, are sorry for not making someone laugh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's all you want from us, you know. That's the job. That's the job. You know, if you if you shovel for a living, the second you stop shoveling, people are gonna go, "What the fuck?" <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, listen, I, I, we've been doing this for eight years. The people have been there from, you know, uh, in the beginning in, in the fucking basement. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's okay to sh share moments like this, uh, even though they might be emotional or, or not as humorous as we normally are. It's it's fine. It's like, you know, because, hey, yeah. you know what? Some Somebody could be going through the same thing you're going through. They lost a loved one during this, th th throughout this, and it's nice to hear that somebody else... <sighs> You know, is speaking to it, and you might help uh, someone who's 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 going through a tough time. So that, that's a really good point, man. That's you know, a, don't don't be afraid to you know share stories that are they're not uh, you know funny. It's this is not about being funny. It's just about you know kind of you know we, listen. We share our lives, good and bad, and there's been ninety eight percent good throughout the last eight years, and sometimes you know. Yeah. The, these things happen, so I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't you gotta, ap apologize for it. You're right, man. I appreciate those words. And it's and at some point you gotta you gotta start to just try and remember the the good times and the good memories. Otherwise, you know, you can't you can't be like this all the time. And and I just want you people to know, man. The minute we're done, I'll probably cry again. But I I just I just again I'm worried about people thinking I'm being disrespectful to my dad. No, and hey, any listen, of the man. Stuff I'm saying. I uh, I don't think it's disrespectful. I think you're honoring the man and uh, and uh, showing you know sharing your story and what you went through. I, I don't I don't see anything uh, to to hold your head low about at, that. Um, at one point, uh, and this is this is again my experience in this situation. So it's not about my dad. Is how I justify saying this one, but. I think I was telling you this when I was driving home, but my dad, you know, uh, we were t talking because we know he was passing at this point, and I asked his favorite band is Chicago, and was sitting, me and him was sitting there, and I put on, he wanted to hear a great Chicago song, um, 
Old days, good times I remember. It's just a great tune, you know. Driving movie. My dad loved Chicago and loved that tune. And then, uh, you know, and then surprisingly after that, he wanted me to play him Glory Days by Bruce Springsteen. He goes, play the one with the baseball player and they go back in for a beer. You know, so I play that one and he's like, you know, he really enjoys it. And then I remember he liked this tune, What a Fool Believes by the Doobie Brothers. So then I go, da da da, I go, Dad, how about this one? And he goes, What's that one? Oh, yeah, Doobie Brothers. And now in my head, I'm like, Oh, the, the man is telling you what he wants to hear. And now you're playing DJ and putting on tunes he didn't even ask for. Like, I feel like my dad's like, Did I ask for the fucking Doobie Brothers? <laughs> I wanted the last song I ever heard to be Chicago <laughs> and Bruce Springsteen. Now I'm going to get up to heaven. I'm going to be hubbing what a fool believes in front of Jesus. And Jesus is going to go, Is that your favorite song? And nah, my son was fucking playing on it. Yeah. It would be like. But like, you know, even his last dinner was pasta, you know, it was pasta. It would be like, you know, right at the end of the pasta, just putting a broccoli in his mouth. You know? like, oh, yeah. oh, shit. Oh, man. It's funny, man. So, Unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah, man, it's been, uh, it's been one, one hell of a ride this year. It's been, uh. Yeah, I don't know where we go from here. I, you know, people go like, oh, 2020 suck, 2021. It's the same. <laughs> the first day of the new year, they fucking overtook the capital. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same shit, man. There's no there's no butterflies and birds. It's it's fucking, people. It's just like, what is it? It's just rioting? Or just all, all of a sudden normal? I mean... You got to feel for these families that the, 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 f- the father, whatever, is running for president in, in when he's 75, 76, 77, right? Don't the kids go, damn, you're fucking old. <laughs> <laughs> Just go watch your grandkids grow up. What the hell are you going to be? Flying yeah. around in the Air Force One, meetings every day. I don't know. No, yeah, they're not wired that way. I mean, I mean, Pelosi would rather die with a gavel in her hand than a grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't there like a retirement plan in Congress? I mean, just like, let's put an age limit on how old you could be. To be in this in this job, I know, I know. I, I listen. It's it's like it's just con- any other job in the world, from cash register to lawyer, or in between. You walk in and they're eighty, and you think you're gonna get not good service, <laughs> right? <laughs> any job in the world. <laughs> That's it. A, a, a gardener comes over to cut your trees and he's 80. You're like, holy shit. Even the 80 year old greeter at Walmart gives a fucking shitty wave. You ever have it when it's someone younger? It's a nice, brisk welcome to Walmart. The 80 year old. It's like, it's just what it is. You know? Oh, man. That's why they try to make the last years of your life so appealing as re- retirement so you wouldn't be enticed like you- you'd want to beat it and go enjoy that like my dad was the king of his community golfed every day they, you know everybody knew fred he was the man he loved his retirement that's what you do he wouldn't want to be president get it man yeah, yeah i don't know every time you turn the news on it's something man it's just you can't get away from it I'm just looking for shit to do at this point. Mm. I, and I talked about this a few months back. Granted, I've been to North Carolina and Florida during this this uh, pandemic, but they were to visit my wife's family. They weren't at like a quote unquote vacation. Every time I turn around, I know someone that's going to Hawaii, renting a house in Utah, going to the Bahamas, and they, and I'm afraid to go get the mail, bro, <clears throat> out here. Yeah. So, people got no fear? I know. I, t- I don't get it, you know? <clears throat> I mean, I wasn't near my parents. My brother got it, and his, you know, and he got better, you know, but, um, and he wasn't near my parents. They were, you know, none of us were around them, so it's not any. 
Because that would be even worse, you know, if like I had been there and then they got it afterwards and then you wonder if it was you. So oh that's, God, yeah. so, <clears throat> and I don't know, man, some people though, you know, when they get, they get it and then uh, they think they're good to go and they're never going to get it again. I don't know. No one, but that's the thing I really learned through all this and being so intensely involved in it is there is, they don't really know much. They really don't, man. I mean, well, I mean. As far that's as, the un- yeah, that, yeah, that's the underlying fear uh, is like if you do like I got the type of luck if uh, God forbid I do get it I'm gonna have to learn to read and write again right I mean that that that's you like, have to what <laughs> learn to read and write again you know, oh like, shit guys <laughs> that's, that's like we we don't know what kind of strain he's got <laughs> right. But, right now I'm oh, reading God. your now I'm reading your fucking hair falls out if you get this thing. Now you're gonna get this thing. You're gonna get. You're gonna. You're gonna get sick, and you're gonna come out bald. Well, I'm not. Which, re- <laughs> I'm not re- which, which which one now? Because now there's one out of Africa. There's one out of in Britain. There's flavors, guy. There's flavors now. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, fuck. <laughs> That's the other thing too. After all this, after all the tragedy I had been through and stuff, and I mean the whole world, I I understand that. I'm just saying my personal one. I'm in my car driving home on New Year's Day, just spent and stuff and crying and Chicago comes on. And then I look up and there's a giant sign that says, Jesus loves you. And I'm like, yeah, really? I'm, 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 I've been feeling that lately, big fella. <laughs> yeah, keep that love coming. It's <laughs> spilling out of you. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jeez. Uh, oh, so, but you know how they say... Um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, give me a, like I was like, I'm a faith guy. I really am, you know. And I think my dad's upstairs looking down. I just do. I mean, like I was saying, my dad when we were talking about it, um, and the nurse, someone came in and said, "Do you guys believe in God or have faith?" And I said to the nurse, "Listen, I go. Me and my dad didn't fall asleep every Sunday for years for an hour in church for no reason at all, right? Even my dad's still <laughs> laughing." <laughs> so I'm like, of course we do. Well, uh, but um, what was I gonna say about the faith thing? Is uh, oh shit, it was on the tip of my tongue. Oh yeah, so I was saying, you know, God, like, just show me a sign, man. You know, give me a sign that or that my dad is there and he's looking down or something. And then after driving like seven hours home, so tired, you know, from all that stuff. When you get into my town, you go, you end up on this one lane road. And then I was literally about two miles outside of Fredonia. And I was like, I'm pretty much home. And I'm just be honest, you know, I'm like, I'm going to smoke a little pot, right? So I pull out the one hitter, the windows are up. So it's like very smelly. And, and I just finish. And oh, and here's, here's the thing though. When I left to come, when all this started and I rushed to come here, I was driving to my parents. I noticed my inspection sticker on the car expired in November and I was already into December. So I'm like, holy shit, man. I, I, I've driven before where a, a trooper just noticed my sticker in passing and pulled me over. So I was really weary of that. But I got to my parents. I pretty much didn't use the car except to go to the hospital. Um, plus then too, you like feel like you could tell a cop the situation. Yeah, yeah. But then uh, starting January 1st, when I was driving home, in New York, the way it works is the new inspection sticker for the new year is a different color. So, so now it's real obvious that I got the wrong one. No. Uh, and I'm driving, and I'm two, like I said, two miles out, and I and I just finish, and there's a trooper right across the way. As soon as I pass him, he fires it up, and I'm like, uh, I mean, I'm like, I know it's me, I know it's me. So my heart is pounding, and in my town, dude, you get pulled over for that, you're in the newspaper. It's like not good. It is not good. So I'm like, fuck. And I have my Febreze, right? That's my emergency thing. So I pulled out. I'm fucking, and and he's on me so fast. I'm spraying it everywhere. It's hitting the inside of the windshield. So uh, so like you'll see it all mushy. Then I'm throwing it to the side. I'm putting everything away, and I'm 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 literally I have my hand out because there's a shoulder, and I'm doing the point to the trooper that I'm pulling over. I'm just looking for a spot, you know. And like I finally I pull over and he's right there, and I'm like I'm fucking so dead, man. I pull over and I I look up. He fucking stops, then starts and goes right around me. 
and goes to the guy in front of me. Like, I didn't even know the guy in front of me was so far in front of me. He didn't seem to be speeding or anything. And I'm like, what? He didn't get me. And he went and pulled that guy over. So then I start going. I'm, I'm so convinced that he got confused about who he was pulling over. And then he'll realize he made a mistake. <laughs> that I bang a right really quick up this side road. And then I bang into this trailer park. And there's all these trailers. And I put the car in park and I get out and I look up and I'm like, you are up there, big man. <laughs> you are up there. <laughs> Fuck, man. It really, oh, it was the sign. Yeah. It was, I mean, I mean, 99.9% .9 sure I was getting pulled over. I don't even know how that happened, man. That was the big guy going, I am up here and don't, don't do that anymore. Wait till you get home. Like, you know, you're <laughs> yeah. supposed to. That was, that was By the way, <laughs> flowers from Lou, flowers from Jimmy from Boston. I mean, class, class. You know what I'm saying? By by the way, I, I want to let, let you know there's something on the way. You'll get it tomorrow. And oh, I know. no, no. Listen, there's been a hiccup in the in your Christmas gift. So these these two things kind of go hand in hand. Okay. So which leads me to. Night vision. Bro, I was going to save it for when you got yours. Let's edit that right there. For see? when I get yours, so we do it at the same no, time. No, huh? no, no, no. No? no. All right. <laughs> so, I got him. All my All idea. Right. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Pete sends me a Christmas gift. I open it up. It's night vision, like, Binoculars. That's the best way I could describe it. I mean, you, you put these things up and, and you see you see a deer in your yard at night, right? That's that that's why I got them because in the cast you always say you're hearing things at night. So I thought of, I like to try and get something from the cast. So I thought that would be funny. <laughs> By the way, folks, yeah. I got them prior to my mom and dad going to the hospital. I don't even think I hopped off the phone with my dad, <laughs> Googled Christmas gifts. <laughs> But yeah, I'm um, glad you dug them. Did they work, man? They work. Uh, it's funny. Now that I got them, I don't hear nothing. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? I feel like the animals know you got them. <laughs> yeah, coy the coyote stopped, the owl. Nobody's coming by now. And I got this thing sitting on my bedside waiting to pull them out at 3 o'clock in the morning to see what the hell's going on outside. But no nothing's showing up. Right? Yeah. So the other did it, night, did they, Yeah, what? Yeah, they work. They work. You know, cool. you gotta adjust and and, and, and whatnot. And yeah, you know, I I put them the wrong way at first because they, they look like binoculars, but you actually use them the other way around that you would use normal binoculars. Oh, oh. So two nights ago the alarm goes off. Right? Now the only reason I hear the alarm is because the phone's ringing in our bedroom because the alarm, the company's calling us to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you've ever gotten on the phone with the people while the alarm is going off and they're asking you if everything is okay. No, no, we don't have that way they call us. Okay, because they, 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 call, they call the house. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Because it's connected to the... You know, you know, they, so they they need to know if they need to dispatch the police. Right, so, right. <laughs> so, so, so the call happens like instantaneous. The thing goes off, and everything okay? And I'm like, I don't know yet. You know, like <laughs> it's not like it's not like the guy broke in my window and he's hovering over my bed. <laughs> right, I go, right. I gotta go take a look around. So, yeah. can you could you hold the line? You know? <laughs> can you walk with me? <laughs> yeah. Just stay on the line, and if you hear anything, and I lose the phone, and you hear a struggle, then you'll know something's wrong. Yeah, right? yeah, and then you'll know. I got to do a recon of the house, man. <laughs> I don't know what got into me, but Lana the, the, the picks the phone up. I go, oh, it's the alarm. I get out of bed, and I sprint to where to turn the alarm off. 
but I didn't even think of any, you know, didn't even think anybody's in the house or anything like that. Just, just went to turn the alarm off because I didn't want to wake up the kids. Right. I was more fearful of the kids getting up <laughs> yeah. than somebody being in the house. Uh, um, even if there was someone in the house, wouldn't you hope your kids slept through the whole thing? Right. Like maybe you're sitting your kids down when they're 18 each. Listen, I told you. Your daughter, this when she turned 18. So here's the deal, Caruso. Now that you're 18, when you were three, wait, no, was he two? When, you were, when you were one and a half, there was an intruder. I, yeah, right? So, I mean, but was there anyone inside? Is that what you're telling no, me? No, 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 no. It was uh, the, the wind blew a door. Now, yeah, doesn't really... that freak you out, though? It's not worth it. The alarm. Yeah, it's like shit. Now you have a heart attack. You're walking around, you're probably scared shit when you're walking around, right? Well, I had to go find out where the, you know, it says on the box where the um, the entry is, and it was the garage. But I knew, you know, I'm, I'm really good. I'm 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 the guy that walks around the house at night locking everything up. Yeah. I, do Do you have that in your in your uh, does 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 Jackie do that or you? No. Yeah, I do. Right before I go to bed, check all the doors. Absolutely. Yeah. So she doesn't, right? No, not if I'm home. If I'm not, though, she will. Yeah. Okay, I, it's so much of my job where Lana's walking past the door I haven't checked to go to bed, and she won't check it. You know, like... Because <laughs> she probably knows you're going to double-check it anyway, so why bother, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Man. So, yeah, that was, that was like the only excitement we've had, really, in the last month and a uh, half. The, the, the alarm went off. I mean... Our Christmas was spent in my yard. My mother came, my sister and her family. They sat, I want to say, 40, you know, about 30, 30 yards from us. We put the gifts in the middle, and yeah. you literally had to scream, that one's from me. No, not that. You know, you know how you yeah. do around the Christmas tree. Yeah, yeah. We're doing this thirty yards apart. No, the blue <laughs> is for Talia, and the other one's for Grandma. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's a, that's the same thing with like you know my mom was like my dad didn't have any requests about after he passed you know so my mom is they gonna they're both being cremated my dad's gonna be cremated and my mom when her time comes. She's like, what do you think of that? And I go, I'm being cremated. So is Jackie. I mean, I I get it. Um, so um, I was telling you about the ashes, which I'll tell the listeners. You can, to have the Catholic priest do what he does after you pass, uh, if you're going to have ashes, they have to either be buried in a cemetery or they have to be buried at sea. And the priest has to be present on the boat if you're going to dump them at sea, right? That's a, that, that's a racket, by the way, right? Oh, the whole thing is. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, you, you got you to you pay the priest to come out to the boat, or you, how does that work? Is it is it like a fee? Or are you gonna listen? If you have it in the church, the fee is, you know, ten right. grand. If <laughs> if you do a, a cruise, it's fifteen. I mean, like, what what do they give you prices? Well, I don't know what the price is, but my point is, considering the reputation of the Catholic Church lately, <laughs> you would think they'd be having a massive discount just trying to attract new fucking customers, right? <laughs> so my point is, you think they go, listen, and with people don't have a lot of faith in us, let's let's start, everything's free for a while, everything's free. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I would tell. Get back there. Fa like the cast. We could start charging now at this point if we wanted. But we don't. But we could. That's what they want to do. Make them love it, hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I don't. And, uh, yeah. So, obviously, there is a fee. And it's like, okay. And you know, right? Because you know as the priest that my father won't be greeted at heaven unless his ashes are buried in your cemetery. Oh, man. Really almost kind of makes you start to lose faith with some of the silliness of this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, what was I going to say about that? So... Oh, no, don't man. they give you options on, on the on the cremation in regards to, like, uh, my, buddy's, different... my buddy was telling me Yeah. Uh, that he goes, well, you know, would, would, you, would you like an, a necklace? And my buddy's like, what? Oh, because your buddy yeah. was, was his mom passed. He said, "Right, well, mom passed away." And yeah, they're saying yeah. that they, they could, they could, uh, with your permission, take a fingerprint of your mother's hand, burn the body, and then what they do is they take that fingerprint and they sprinkle the ashes in the fingerprint, and you could wear it. Yeah. 
on on your on your neck. Fucking. <sighs> And it's like a racket. It's like, it's like the 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 urn on the on the shelf. Somebody said, you know what? Let's start giving them six, seven different options and doing an upcharge. Yeah, right? uh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you want to split them up. They probably have a travel bag. If you. <laughs> If you still want to go with your husband on vacation, right? Or if you want to go with your wife on vacation, geez. But my dad, you know, under these circumstances, my mom, you know, we're talking about having a service. And I'm glad we all decided that I told my mom and everyone, like, you know, who's going to come right now? Everyone's frightened. It's a scary yeah. time. No one wants to go anywhere, especially most of their friends are their age now, too. So... We'll wait until the smoke clears, and this summer at the country club, uh, the main part of the where their parents lived, again, we're going to have a big party, and like the, the golf club already said they want to do a dedication, so it's going to be a big celebration for my dad. And I'm thinking when I go, that's what I want. And my dad didn't, you know, he probably would have had a service under regular circumstances, but I'm thinking no matter what, when I go... I want just a big party where everyone remembers me, maybe tell a few stories. And don't even make the party about me. Like, if you're in a conversation that has nothing to do with me, fucking enjoy your conversation. But I'm the reason we all got together. And it's months after I died, so there's no crying. I just want everyone to be happy. Remember me happy. That's a good idea. I think it's better if people meet for a celebration rather yes. than a... Well, listen, I think funerals, wakes, what have you, are set up for closure and or uh, grieving. Uh, you know. That's a good point, bro. You know, I'll do it the way I want to do it. And then when I pass away six months later, everyone's going to be crying and going, oh, Petey, we just wanted to wrap this shit up. Now we're crying over you all over again, right? Yeah. Six six months ago. <laughs> we moved, we <laughs> moved on. Now I'm looking at a four by six photo of you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, but like, like the dedication ceremony at the golf course, it seems more like, a, you know, time has passed. Maybe people more prone to, you know, share stories. They're not yeah. as as emotional as maybe they would have been right after. But I think I, some people yeah. like the uh, the wake or funeral because you know, they see other people. And other people sometimes offer, you know, sympathy and comfort and what have you. So yeah, I get yeah. I get it both ways. But I'm leaning more towards your party idea on this, just because you know, yeah, small thing for friends, for family, an intimate thing when you pass, and then you know, and the then big, you blow it out, and you blow it out. Yeah, exactly. And the, even in your last final joke, you have a little list of uh, if these people show up, you know. Don't let them in. They think they were my friend, but they're not. And now they're going to find out. <laughs> I love that move. Yeah. Well, we've often talked about funerals and wakes and like you go to these things and you take notes and what you want for yours and what have you. Now, is it a good idea to sit down now and just write out, man, you know, you could update it as the years go on. Of something that you would want somebody to read at your funeral, and it's funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're you're speaking to the people, even though you're dead. Yeah, and you're like, you know, like maybe it starts off with, "What's up, guys? I wrote this." You know, I, I don't know. Is is a, is that a is that a a weird? I mean, like, would you have liked to hear? Yeah, your your dad's last like speech to his family yeah well i mean on a side note you know just being able to speak to him at the end as hard as it was uh, friends of mine and i know that have gone through it have all been like uh you'll be glad later on when the healing really starts that you got that moment but the bigger thing to your point of like you know having someone read something that you wrote if, if there really is a heaven and you're looking down and if you did that you could see it I'd be pissed up in heaven going, I should have did that. I could have had such a be, you know. But if there is no heaven and I wouldn't know, then, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, but it would be nice to leave him with one last laugh, right? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know either. It depends how I die. What if I write this funny thing and then, like, you know, I die because, like, I'm murdered behind the back deli alley, you know? <laughs> And I'm sitting there, I write something going, don't worry about me. I, it was a good 
passing. <laughs> Good passing. It was behind a dumpster <laughs> with a switchblade. So what the fuck are you talking about, Pete? I obviously, you didn't get a chance to edit that speech. You know? So, you know, there's that to it. But anyway, oh, man, uh, man, you know. I'm glad we had this, and like I said for like 20 times, man, you really are a great friend, man. You really helped me get through it. I mean, just, just, you know, like you would text and reach out and ask me if I wanted to talk, and you didn't miss a day, and you did it like two or three times a day, and probably if you didn't do it after a while, I would have been like, well, do you have COVID? What the fuck, guy? <laughs> what is my text, you know? And well, I know, I, I, I know at 9.30, well, I appreciate that. I, I, I know at 9.30 every morning you would get an update, and it'd be 6.30 here. Yeah. And yeah. I, I'm up at 5.45, 5.30 anyway, so I would go, okay, I wonder. Because you were saying at 9.30 you would have to get on the phone and kind of get the the, the prognosis and, and what's the diagnosis, whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. The doctors had made their rounds and this and that, and yeah, you know, so. And I... And I and just to shed some light on that, I lived that uh, when Serafina was in the hospital. Uh, knock on wood, she wasn't dying, but you know, you you don't know what's going on when you're in the hospital and your daughter is, you know, having trouble breathing. And they do this, they do these rounds, and then they get together as like a group outside the hospital room, and they ask you, you know, would you like to, you know participate and listen to what's going on and they just do like they have head doctors got a clipboard and go look at what's going on uh check the you know, uh, pulses at uh, 162 and uh, heart rate and, and, and okay what's going on uh she's on the medication this and, that, and, that. and what i tend to do when i'm in the hospital or any other doctor and I'm, we might have discussed this on the cast i'm looking at like non-verbals you know like um i'm looking at like the look of concern on the yep. doctor's face, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, and, and if you, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to. Do Does it come a point in COVID where they say to you, he's not going to make it? Or or is it, you're going to go home and maybe he's going to get better? I mean, what, what is, is there a tipping well, point there? I mean, there's a combination. Like, you, you kind of run out of options, but there's also, like... My father was like, even when he was young and in good health years ago, he made it very clear that, God forbid, however his life ended, he never wanted to be on a ventilator. So that was not an option. So, you know, even when I spoke to him about it now, you know, having everything else kind of functioning okay, there was that outside chance on a ventilator, his lungs, you know, it would have been a miracle beyond miracles. And my father was just not doing that. He's like, I'm, I want to die the way I want to pass, you know, and just fucking... St I always felt when I passed someday it was going to be crying and da-da-da, but now seeing how my dad did, I'm like, all right, God, you got to teach me one more lesson on the way out? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, well, now it's you got... It's about every... Even though his last day on Earth, it was about everybody around him, you know? And, and not even like, don't be sad, just like, like to me, it was like, you got to be strong. You got to be strong. And then, you know, you're just hanging out and trying to give him, you know, so just brave. So, um, but do you even think but, he knew that uh, going in? Like, do you think he knew he was going to be this still this kind of pillar of the family, this rock, even in death? Or do you think he just realizes what's going on and reacts in, in kind? I mean, like. I I, yeah. I I I think yeah. Go ahead. I mean, oh. do you think he 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 consciously made the decision of I got to be strong for my family during this I, well? Time? I mean, I, in a way, but I feel like you know. I mean, I guess no one really knows how they're going to act until they're in that position. But I just think he acted in character as the greatest man I've personally ever known, and everything good about me is from this guy. And and you know, why wouldn't my hero? go to the other side like that, you know, it would be like, it's like the last show. Yeah. So, and I just think, you know, yeah, you know, I don't think he, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's up with God right now going, Oh my God, I, th I thought I was going <laughs> to kind of lose it down there. I'm surprised I didn't myself, you know, but never, <laughs> not once, you know, just so, 
So, um, but yeah, so you kind of just, it depends on everybody. So he didn't want to do that ventilator and you run out of options and they say we can try this again. But if you're a coherent patient, you know, you, you just hear all your options and you make your own choices and it's just a tough thing, man. A horrible, yeah. horrible thing for anyone to go through. And I pray to God that uh, everybody starts getting better immediately and this thing stops, obviously. How's your mom? She's strong. She's being really strong. I mean, she's uh, very upset, but she's also got, which is helpful where they live. They got a lot of close friends, you know. So, and, you know, me and my brother and sister are constantly going there. And so, you know, she's being strong, but man, 55 years. And the thing about my parents, too, is like love story, you know, right down to the end. You know, my dad's going 55 years, Patty, 55. You know, I mean, just absolutely in love till their last breath. Right, high school sweethearts, but they went to separate colleges and did that whole thing. And even like when they went to separate colleges, they said, if this is going to work, we have to go away, date other people. And when we come home after four years, you know, we'll see each other when we come home, obviously. But after four years, if we still want to be together. So they dated other people to the point where my mom, uh, a guy she dated uh, from Horsehead, New York, had asked her to, to marry him. She just loved him. You know, my mother's like, what are you kidding me? I'm just having, uh, I'm dating in college. My, I love this man back home. So ever since that, through the years, whenever we'd be on a road trip, oh, and the guy, of course, you know, as a man, you keep tabs. The guy ended up being a shoe salesman back in Horse, <laughs> Horsehead, New York. So whenever we would drive on a road trip and we'd go past Horsehead, my old man would always go, you, you could have been living in Horsehead to a dad that's a shoe guy. He's a shoe guy. You'd be getting free shoes living in Horsehead. And my mother would go, oh, stop it, Fred. And he's like, yeah, you got lucky, Patty, baby. You got lucky. <laughs> so rest in peace, man. man. You know, I'll never forget all the good times, and that's what you got to hold on to. So anyway, as far as all this goes, uh, you know, let's have a great new year with the listeners. Let's have some good, uplifting news. And, you know, I'll always talk about my dad through the years, but we just had to have. Yeah, had to we had to have the show. This. And, um, you know, yeah, th thanks. Thanks for uh, for sharing. I know that was not uh, not a comfortable thing to do. But like you said, I think we had to kind of clear the air and, uh, you know, put it put it out there and hopefully it was is healing and um it was helpful yeah, man. Man. yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll be talking more about them uh, as the year progresses and uh we have a we have a new year upon us 2021 uh what is it thursday um yeah man not not much else here we'll uh, we'll pick this back up next week uh we appreciate everybody uh listening to the pete and sebastian show our condolences go out to the Coriali family and uh and uh, rest you, in man. peace uh, uh, to your father. Another friend says goodbye for another soul. It's time to fly. And oh, there is love. So this is for the other side. The one they like to call.